Child labor is the practice of having children engage in economic activity, on a part or full-time basis. The practice deprives children of their childhood, and is harmful to their physical and mental development. Poverty, lack of good schools and the growth of the informal economy are considered to be the key causes of child labor in India. Some other causes of child labor in India are cheap wages and accessibility to factories that can produce the maximum amount of goods for the lowest possible price. Corruption in the government of India also plays a major role in child labor because laws that should be enforced to prevent child labor are not because of the corrupt government. The 2011 National Census of India found the total number of child labourers, aged 5 to 14, to be at 10.1 million https colon slash slash www.indiastat.com slash table slash labour dash and dash workforce dash data slash 380987 slash child dash labour slash 60 slash 969060 slash data dot aspx closing parenthesis comma and the total child population to be 259.64 million in that age group. The child labor problem is not unique to India. Worldwide, about 217 million children work, many full-time, as per the Child Labor Prohibition and Regulation Act, 1986, amended in 2016. CLPR Act. A. Child. Is defined as any person below the age of 14, and the CLPR Act prohibits employment of a child in any employment including as a domestic help. It is a cognizable criminal offence to employ a child for any work. Children between age of 14 and 18 are defined as adolescent, and the law allows adolescent to be employed except in the listed hazardous occupation and processes which include mining, inflammable substance and explosives related work and any other hazardous process as per the Factories Act, 1948. In 2001, an estimated 1% of all child workers, or about 120,000 children in India were in a hazardous job. Notably, the Constitution of India prohibits child labour in hazardous industries but not in non-hazardous industries as a fundamental right under Article 24. UNICEF estimates that India with its larger population, has the highest number of labourers in the world under 14 years of age, while sub-Saharan African countries have the highest percentage of children who are deployed as child labourers. The International Labour Organization estimates that agriculture, at 60%, is the largest employer of child labour in the world, while the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization estimates 70% of child labour is deployed in agriculture and related activities. Outside of agriculture, child labour is observed in almost all informal sectors of the Indian economy. Companies including Gap, Primark, Monsanto have been criticised for child labour in their products. The companies claim they have strict policies against selling products made by underage children, but there are many links in a supply chain making it difficult to oversee them all. In 2011, after three years of Primark's effort, BBC acknowledged that its award-winning investigative journalism report of Indian child labour use by Primark was a fake. The BBC apologised to Primark, to Indian suppliers and all its viewers. Another company that has come under much scrutiny was Nike. Nike was under pressure to speak up about alleged sweatshops that harboured children that the company was exploiting to make their sneakers. Since then Nike has come out with a separate web page that specifically points out where they get their products from and where their products are manufactured. In December 2014, the U.S. Department of Labor issued a list of goods produced by child labor or forced labor and India figured among 74 countries where a significant incidence of critical working conditions has been observed. Unlike any other country, 23 goods were attributed to India, the majority of which are produced by child labor in the manufacturing sector. In addition to the constitutional prohibition of hazardous child labour, various laws in India, such as the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children ACT 2000, and the Child Labour Prohibition and Abolition ACT 1986 provide a basis in law to identify, prosecute and stop child labour in India. Definition The term child labor, suggests ILO, is best defined as work that deprives children of their childhood, their potential and their dignity, and that is harmful to physical and mental development. 
It refers to work that is mentally, physically, socially or morally dangerous and harmful to children, or work whose schedule interferes with their ability to attend regular school, or work that affects in any manner their ability to focus during war and clubs and boutros, school or experience a healthy childhood. UNICEF defines child labor differently. A child, suggests UNICEF, is involved in child labor activities if between 5 and 11 years of age, he or she did at least one hour of economic activity or at least 28 hours of domestic work in a week, and in case of children between 12 and 14 years of age, he or she did at least 14 hours of economic activity or at least 42 hours of economic activity and domestic work per week. UNICEF in another report suggests. Children's work needs to be seen as happening along a continuum, with destructive or exploitative work at one end and beneficial work, promoting or enhancing children's development without interfering with their schooling, recreation and rest, at the other. And between these two poles are vast areas of work that need not negatively affect a child's development. India's Census 2001 office, defines child labour as participation of a child less than 17 years of age in any economically productive activity with or without compensation, wages or profit. Such participation could be physical or mental or both. This work includes part-time help or unpaid work on the farm, family enterprise or in any other economic activity such as cultivation and milk production for sale or domestic consumption. Indian government classifies child labourers into two groups, main workers are those who work six months or more per year. And marginal child workers are those who work at any time during the year but less than six months in a year. Some child rights activists argue that child labour must include every child who is not in school because he or she is a hidden child worker. UNICEF, however, points out that India faces major shortages of schools, classrooms and teachers particularly in rural areas where 90% of child labour problem is observed. About one in five primary schools have just one teacher to teach students across all grades. After its independence from colonial rule, India has passed a number of constitutional protections and laws on child labour. The Constitution of India in the Fundamental Rights and the Directive Principles of State Policy prohibits child labour below the age of 14 years in any factory or mine or castle or engaged in any other hazardous employment Article 24. The Constitution also envisioned that India shall, by 1960, provide infrastructure and resources for free and compulsory education to all children of the age 6 to 14 years. Article 21a and Article 45, India has a federal form of government, and labour being a subject in the concurrent list, both the central and state governments can and have legislated on child labour. The major national legislative developments include the following, the Factories Act of 1948, the Act prohibits the employment of children below the age of 14 years in any factory. The law also placed rules on who, when and how long can pre-adults aged 15 to 18 years be employed in any factory. The Mines Act of 1952, the Act prohibits the employment of children below 18 years of age in a mine. The Child and Adolescent Labor Prohibition and Regulation Act of 1986, a child is defined as any person below the age of 14 and the CLPR Act prohibits employment of a child in any employment including as a domestic help except helping own family in non-hazardous occupations. It is a cognizable criminal offense to employ a child for any work. Children between age of 14 and 18 are defined as adolescent and the law allows adolescent to be employed except in the listed hazardous occupation and processes which include mining, inflammable substance and explosives related work and any other hazardous process as per the Factories Act, 1948, the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act of 2015, this law made it a crime, punishable with a prison term, for anyone to keep a child in bondage for the purpose of employment. The Right of Children to Free and Compulsory Education Act of 2009, the law mandates free and compulsory education to all children aged 6 to 14 years. This legislation also mandated that 25% of seats in every private school must be allocated for children from disadvantaged groups and physically challenged children. It is not applied through India formulated a national policy on child labour in 1987. This policy seeks to adopt a gradual and sequential approach with a focus on rehabilitation of children working in hazardous occupations. It envisions strict enforcement of Indian laws on child labour combined with development programmes to address the root causes of child labour such as poverty. 
In 1988, this led to the National Child Labor Project initiative. This legal and development initiative continues, with a current central government funding of 6 billion rupees, targeted solely to eliminate child labour in India. Despite these efforts, child labour remains a major challenge for India. No, child below age of 14 years shall be employed to work in any factory or mine or engaged in any hazardous employment. Topic. Causes For much of human history and across different cultures, children less than 17 years old have contributed to family welfare in a variety of ways. UNICEF suggests that poverty is the biggest cause of child labor. The report also notes that in rural and impoverished parts of developing and undeveloped parts of the world, children have no real and meaningful alternative. Schools and also teachers are unavailable. Child labor is the unnatural result. A BBC report, similarly, concludes poverty and inadequate public education infrastructure are some of the causes of child labor in India. Between boys and girls, UNICEF finds girls are two times more likely to be out of school and working in a domestic role. Parents with limited resources, claims UNICEF, have to choose whose school costs and fees they can afford when a school is available. Educating girls tends to be a lower priority across the world, including India. Girls are also harassed or bullied at schools, sidelined by prejudice or poor curricula, according to UNICEF. Solely by virtue of their gender, therefore, many girls are kept from school or drop out, then provide child labor. The International Labor Organization and Spreading Smiles Through Education Organization suggests poverty is the greatest single force driving children into the workplace. Income from a child's work is felt to be crucial for his, her own survival or for that of the household. For some families, income from their children's labor is between 25 and 40 percent of the household income. According to a 2008 study by ILO, among the most important factors driving children to harmful labor is the lack of availability and quality of schooling. Many communities, particularly rural areas do not possess adequate school facilities. Even when schools are sometimes available, they are too far away, difficult to reach, unaffordable or the quality of education is so poor that parents wonder if going to school is really worthwhile. In government-run primary schools, even when children show up, government-paid teachers do not show up 25% of the time. The 2008 ILO study suggests that illiteracy resulting from a child going to work, rather than a quality primary and secondary school, limits the child's ability to get a basic educational grounding which would in normal situations enable them to acquire skills and to improve their prospects for a decent adult working life. An albeit older report published by UNICEF outlines the issues summarized by the ILO report. The UNICEF report claimed that while 90% of child labor in India is in its rural areas, the availability and quality of schools is decrepit. In rural areas of India, claims the old UNICEF report, about 50% of government funded primary schools that exist do not have a building, 40% lack a blackboard, few have books, and 97% of funds for these publicly funded schools have been budgeted by the government as salaries for the teacher and administrators. A 2012 Wall Street Journal article reports while the enrollment in India's school has dramatically increased in recent years to over 96% of all children in the 6 to 14 year age group, the infrastructure in schools, aimed in part to reduce child labor, remains poor. Over 81,000 schools do not have a blackboard, and about 42,000 government schools operate without a building with makeshift arrangements during monsoons and inclement weather. Bigari and Maratra have studied the macroeconomic factors that encourage child labor labor. They focus their study on five Asian nations including India, Pakistan, Indonesia, Thailand and Philippines. They suggest that child labor is a serious problem in all five, but it is not a new problem. Macroeconomic causes encouraged widespread child labor across the world, over most of human history. They suggest that the causes for child labor include both the demand and the supply side. While poverty and unavailability of good schools explain the child labor supply side, they suggest that the growth of low-paying informal economy rather than higher-paying formal economy, called organized economy in India, is amongst the causes of the demand side. India has rigid labor laws and numerous regulations that prevent growth of organized sector where work protections are easier to monitor and work more productive and higher paying. The unintended effect of Indian complex labor laws is the work has shifted to the unorganized informal sector. 
As a result, after the unorganized agriculture sector which employs 60% of child labor, it is the unorganized trade, unorganized assembly and unorganized retail work that is the largest employer of child labor. If macroeconomic factors and laws prevent growth of formal sector, the family-owned informal sector grows, deploying low-cost, easy-to-hire, easy-to-dismiss labor in form of child labor. Even in situations where children are going to school, claim Bigari and Maratra, children engage in routine after-school home-based manufacturing and economic activity. Other scholars too suggest that inflexibility and structure of India's labour market, size of informal economy, inability of industries to scale up and lack of modern manufacturing technologies are major macroeconomic factors affecting demand and acceptability of child labour. Signo et al. suggest the government planned and implemented land redistribution programmes in India, where poor families were given small plots of land with the idea of enabling economic independence, have had the unintended effect of increased child labour. They find that smallholder plots of land are labor-intensively farmed since small plots cannot productively afford expensive farming equipment. In these cases, a means to increase output from the small plot has been to apply more labor, including child labor. Topic bonded child labor In India bonded child labor is a system of forced, or partly forced, labor under which the child, or child's parent enter into an agreement, oral or written, with a creditor. The child performs work as in kind repayment of credit. In the 2005 ILO report, debt bondage in India emerged during the colonial period, as a means of obtaining reliable cheap labour, with loan and land lease relationships implemented during that era of Indian history. These were regionally called Hali, or Halwaha, or Jara systems, and was named by the colonial administration as the indentured labour system. These systems included bonded child labour. Over time, claims the ILO report, this traditional forms of long duration relationships have declined. In 1977, India passed legislation that prohibits solicitation or use of bonded labour by anyone, of anyone including children. Evidence of continuing bonded child labour continue. A report by the Special Rapporteur to India's National Human Rights Commission reported the discovery of 53 child labourers in 1996 in the state of Tamil Nadu during a surprise inspection. Each child or the parent had taken an advance of 10 rupees, 000 to 25, 000. The children were made to work for 12 to 14 hours a day and received only 2 rupees to 3 per days as wages. According to an ILO report, the extent of bonded child labor is difficult to determine, but estimates from various social activist groups range up to 350,000 in 2001. Despite its legislation, prosecutors in India rarely use the Bonded Labor System Abolition Act of 1976 to prosecute those responsible. According to one report, the prosecutors have no direction from the central government that if a child is found to be underpaid, the case should be prosecuted not only under the Minimum Wages Act, 1948 and the Child Labor Prohibition and Regulation Act, 1986, the case should include charges under the Bonded Labor Act of India. The few enforcement actions have had some unintended effects. While there has been a decrease in children working in factories because of enforcement and community vigilance committees, the report claims poverty still compels children and poor families to work. The factory lends money to whoever needs it, puts a loom in the person's home, and then the family with children works out of their homes, bring finished product to pay interest and get some wages. The bonded child and family labor operations were moving out of small urban factories into rural homes. Consequences of child labor The presence of a large number of child laborers is regarded as a serious issue in terms of economic welfare. Children who work fail to get necessary education. They do not get the opportunity to develop physically, intellectually, emotionally and psychologically. In terms of the physical condition of children, children are not ready for long monotonous work because they become exhausted more quickly than adults. This reduces their physical conditions and makes the children more vulnerable to disease. Children in hazardous working conditions are even in worse condition. Children who work, instead of going to school, will remain illiterate which limits their ability to contribute to their own well-being as well as to community they live in. Child labor has long-term adverse effects for India. To keep an economy prospering, a vital criterion is to have an educated workforce equipped with relevant skills for the needs of the industries. 
The young labourers today, will be part of India's human capital tomorrow. Child labour undoubtedly results in a trade off with human capital accumulation. Child labour in India are employed with the majority in agriculture, some in low skilled labour intensive sectors such as sari weaving or as domestic helpers, which require neither formal education nor training, but some in heavy industries such as coal mining. According to the International Labour Organization, there are tremendous economic benefits for developing nations by sending children to school instead of work. Without education, children do not gain the necessary skills such as English literacy and technical aptitude that will increase their productivity to enable them to secure higher skilled jobs in future with higher wages that will lift them out of poverty. <laughs> <laughs> Diamond industry In the year 1999, the International Labour Organization co-published a report with Universal Alliance of Diamond Workers, a trade union. The ILO report claimed that child labour is prevalent in the Indian diamond industry. International Confederation of Free Trade Unions ICFTU in a separate 1997 press release observed that child labour continued to flourish in India's diamond industry. Not everyone agreed with these claims. The South Gujarat Diamond Workers Association, another trade union, acknowledged child labour is present but it is not systematic, is less than 1% and against local industry norms. Local diamond industry businessmen too downplayed these charges. According to the 1999 ILO paper, India annually cuts and polishes 70% of the world's diamonds by weight, or 40% by value. Additionally, India contributes 95% of the emeralds, 85% of the rubies, and 65% of the sapphires worldwide. India processes these diamonds and gems using traditional labour-intensive methods. About 1.5 million people are employed in the diamond industry, mostly in the unorganised sector. The industry is fragmented into small units, each employing a few workers. The industry has not scaled up, organized, and big operators absent. The ILO paper claims that this is to avoid the complex labor laws of India. The export order is split, work is subcontracted through many middlemen, and most workers do not know the name of enterprise with the export order. In this environment, claims the ILO report, exact number of child laborers in India's diamond and gem industry is unknown. They estimate that child laborers in 1997 were between 10,000 and 20,000 out of 1.5 million total workers, about 1 in 100. The ILO report claims the causes for child labour include parents who send their children to work because they see education as expensive, education quality offering no real value, while artisan work in diamond and gem industry to be more remunerative as the child grows up. A more recent study from 2005, conducted at 663 manufacturing units at 21 different locations in India's diamond and gem industry, claims incidence rates of child labour have dropped to 0.31%. Topic. Fireworks manufacture The town of Sivakasi in South India, known for its fireworks and matchsticks industries, has been reported to employ child labour in the production of fireworks. In 2011 Sivakasi, Tamil Nadu was home to over 9,500 firecracker factories and produced almost 100% of total fireworks output in India. The fireworks industry employed about 150,000 people at an average of 15 employees per factory. Most of these were in unorganized sector, with a few registered and organized companies. In 1989, Shubh Bardwaj reported that child labor is present in India's fireworks industry, and safety practices poor. Child labor is common in small shed operation in the unorganized sector. Only four companies scaled up and were in the organized sector with over 500 employees. The larger companies did not employ children and had superior safety practices and resources. The child labor in small, unorganized sector operations suffered long working hours, low wages, unsafe conditions, and tiring schedules. A more recent 2002 report by International Labour Organization ILO, claims that child labour is significant in Tamil Nadu's fireworks, matches or incense sticks industries. However, these children do not work in the formal economy and corporate establishments that produce for export. The child labourers in manufacturing typically toil in supply chains producing for the domestic market of fireworks, matches or incense sticks. 
The ILO report claims that as the demand for these products has grown, the formal economy and corporate establishments have not expanded to meet the demand, rather home-based production operations have mushroomed. This has increased the potential of child labor. Such hidden operations make research and effective action difficult, suggests ILO. Topic: <inaudible> Silk manufacture. A 2003 Human Rights Watch report claims children as young as five years old are employed and work for up to 12 hours a day and six to seven days a week in silk industry. These children, claims, are bonded labor, even though the government of India denies existence of bonded child labor, these silk industry child are easy to find in Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu, claims children are forced to dip their hands in scalding water to palpate the cocoons and are often paid less than 10 rupees per day. In 2012, a German news investigative report claimed that in states like Karnataka, non-governmental organizations had found up to 15,000 children working in the 1,100 silk factories in 1998. In other places, thousands of bonded child laborers were present in 1995. But today, after UNICEF and NGOs got involved, child labor figure is drastically lower, with the total estimated to be fewer than a thousand child laborers. The released children were back in school, claims the report. <laughs> Carpet weaving Siddhartha Kara finds about 20% of carpets manufactured in India could involve child labour. He notes, "...determining the extent to which the handmade carpet supply chain from India to the USA is tainted by slavery and child labour requires an additional exercise in supply chain tracing." Kara's study also finds variation in child labour practices between ethnic and religious groups. Kara and colleagues report highest level of child labor in Muslim community carpet operations, and the presence of debt-bonded child laborers in Muslim villages. <laughs> <laughs> Domestic labor Official estimates for child labor working as domestic labor and in restaurants is more than 2,500,000 while NGOs estimate the figure to be around 20 million. The Government of India expanded the coverage of the Child Labour Prohibition and Regulation Act and banned the employment of children as domestic workers and as workers in restaurants, dabas, hotels, spas and resorts effective from 10 October 2006. Mining Despite laws enacted in 1952, prohibiting employment of people under the age of 18 in the mines primitive coal mines in Meghalaya using child labour were discovered and exposed by the international media in 2013, a related area identified as problematic are the granite quarries. Topic initiatives against child labour in India In 1979, the Indian government formed the Garupadswami Committee to find about child labour and means to tackle it. The Child Labour Prohibition and Regulation Act was enacted based on the recommendations of the committee in 1986. A national policy on child labour was formulated in 1987 to focus on rehabilitating children working in hazardous occupations. The Ministry of Labour and Employment had implemented around 100 industry-specific national child labour projects to rehabilitate the child workers since 1988. The Indian government has enacted a plethora of acts, laws, organisations, and institutions to combat the overwhelming prominence of child labour. Some of the initiatives include the Child Labour Prohibition and Regulation Act which is a piece of legislation that prohibits the engagement of children in certain employment mostly in dangerous conditions and regulates the conditions of work of children. The National Policy on Child Labour seeks to adopt a sequential approach with focus on rehabilitation of children working in hazardous occupations and processes in the first instance, and the Ministry of Labour and Employment functions to provide and supervise a range of policies concerning child labour in India. Furthermore, as reported by Osmond, NGOs such as Care India, Child Rights and You, Global March Against Child Labour have been implemented to combat child labour through education and accessibility to resources. However, these efforts have been largely unsuccessful. <laughs> Non-governmental organisations 
Many NGOs like Bhakpan Bachao Andolan, Childfund, Care India, Talash Association, Child Rights and You, Global March Against Child Labour, Ride India, Childline etc. have been working to eradicate child labour in India. Child labour has also been a subject of public interest litigations in Indian courts. Demography of child labour In India, millions of children are forced into child labour due to poverty, high illiteracy rates due to lack of education, unemployment, overpopulation, etc. As reported by Save the Children, children between the ages of 14 to 17 years engage in hazardous work and account for 62.8% of India's child labour workforce in which more boys than girls .7 million versus 8 .8 million are forced into doing more hazardous work. Child labour used to be most ubiquitous in rural India in which 80% of working children found work. Recently, however, child labour has relocated from rural areas to urbanised areas where the big cities are located. Larger cities provide more opportunity for work compared to smaller, rural areas. As reported by UNICEF, there has been a 54% increase in child labour in urbanised areas for children between the ages of 5 to 14. In addition, according to a campaign against child labour study, India has approximately 1, 26, 66,377 child labourers total. Uttar Pradesh, a state in northern India, has 19, 27,997 child labourers. Delhi, the capital of India, has over 1 million child labourers. Other leading states with similar figures include Bihar, Rajasthan, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. According to 2005 Government of India NSSO, National Sample Survey Org, child labor incidence rates in India is highest among Muslim Indians, about 40% higher than Hindu Indians. Child labor was found to be present in other minority religions of India but at significantly lower rates. Across caste classification, the children had child labour incidence rates of 2.8%, statistically similar to the nationwide average of 2.74%. Tribal populations, however, had higher child labour rates at 3.8%. India has the highest number of children stunted because of malnutrition 48.2 million equivalent to Colombia's population, according to Save the Children's Stolen Childhoods report 0.31 million of children are part of India's workforce, the highest in the world. See also Bonded Labour System Abolition Act, 1976 Child Labour Prohibition and Regulation Act Child Labour in Swaziland Child Trafficking in India Odisha State Child Protection Society Street Children in India